How much would your life change if you knew every single time someone told you a lie, even if that someone was you? Lies like you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you can't own a business, and you definitely will never make more than you did in your old corporate job. Get ready to be proactive, passionate, productive, and oh so profitable in a way you've never before experienced by opening your eyes to the big fat lies. Now, here's the host of Big Fat Lies, business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. Oh my goodness. Can you believe it's Friday already? And it's time for Big Fat Lies. And you might be wondering, like, why would you name a radio show or a broadcast Big Fat Lies? Well, one of the things that you're going to learn about me is I'm super sensitive to what makes people truly happy. And when you're truly happy, if you're truly actualized, you're truly embodied in your happiness, what happens is it makes it so easy for your ideal clients to find you, for ideal situations to find you, for ideal partnerships, for money, for like just when you're totally switched on. And when you're believing these lies, when you're actually not even aware of the lies that you're believing, then what can happen is this lie can be like superimposed over your consciousness. And so we talked about that in the invitation for this radio show. And I'm going to go into that later. But why do I want to talk about lies? Well, I really, one of the missions that I have on this earth is to help people find businesses that they love. And in most cases, in most cases, people who work with me have an established business and they've just lost the joy. They've lost the love. And part of losing the love is believing that the business is supposed to do something very specific. And I have another radio show called, I can't, I can't remember whether we called it, you can't make money doing that, or you can't do that in business. But when you own your own business, or when you are, you know, C-suite or above in the business, you really do have the ability to change and pivot the business back into a place or even ahead into a place that you love. And you know, it's a very, very ancient point of view that you go to the old grindstone with business. You don't have to. You don't have to. It's a choice. And um, this old paradigm where we connect on, oh, how was your day? Oh, Bob, it wasn't bad. Oh, good. I'm glad that your day wasn't bad. Well, then you're programming your day for not bad to be the highest that you can experience. And that drives me insane when I hear that, you know, because we're actively programming our day with everything we think. And you literally, literally cannot afford to have the luxury of a whole bunch of negative thoughts going around in your head, taking up your bandwidth. And one of the negative thoughts that I really, really notice in people's heads is I can't afford it. I can't afford it. What a big freaking lie that is. And so I hope that this is a very triggering show. I hope that people are either so triggered into, you know, sending me a message and saying, well, I truly can't afford it. And getting into a debate with me, come and find me on Facebook and get into a debate with me on what you can afford and what you can't afford. In most cases, in most cases, what you think you can afford isn't even yours. It's not your paradigm. You've bought your parents' paradigm or your grandparents' paradigm and or of some sort of ancestral paradigm. Like maybe you belong to um, a faith and you've bought that paradigm. Or maybe you are like freckle-faced Scottish people. <laughs> And maybe you just know what you could afford and you can't afford anything more than oatmeal, damn it. <laughs> so one of the things that I always end up saying to myself in my head 
when somebody says to me, I can't afford a coach or I can't afford a mentor. I can't afford to have good legal protection. I can't afford to, you know, drive that car or go on that vacation. They're precluding themselves from it. They're like, okay, I'm going to preclude myself from any conversations about what makes me happy by saying that I can't afford it. Well, then you're talking about you can't afford to be happy. Great. That's a lovely place for you to start your life and your day by, you know, having this big fat lie called I can't afford it, sitting on top of what you're doing for your business, sitting on top of what you're doing for your body, sitting on top of what joy you're allowed to have in your life and in your relationships. It's just crazy. And so when you are willing to step outside of that paradigm called I can't afford it what is possible for you like what magic is available for you to conjure or work up or you know like be a wizard on when you're like okay well I'm bored of that point of view what if you said that to yourself I'm freaking bored of the point of view that I can't afford it like what if you were bored if you're like okay I'm done saying I can't afford it what can I say that's different? So what if you said that to yourself? What can I say that's different, that has a more expansive point of view? Well, one of the things that you can say is, what magic is available here? I'd really love to, I don't know, let's think about something that I keep saying that I would love to do. Well, one of the things that I really want to do in short order is I want to take my family on a trip to Mongolia. And um, I grew up with horses and Mongolia is the birthplace of taming horses and using them for transport and using them for, you know, just conquering the world. We've all heard of Genghis Khan or Genghis Khan. Um, And that was the birthplace of the horseback civilization. And so that's one of my things that I think, oh my goodness. And so if I let it stop me that I really don't have, you know, probably it's going to take about $20,000, you know, with flights and accommodation to bring my family that I want to come with me in a way where we're not like sleeping in a, um, you know, in a hostel. (laughs) We're going to be sleeping in yurts, but we got to get there first, right? So that. Like tap into that. What is that for you that if, uh, you know, if money were no object, if, you know, somebody said you could just have it and like wave a magic wand and said that you can have it, like what is it for you? And the more you think about what is it that I could have if I waved a magic wand for myself And I stopped programming myself with this, I can't afford it. Because you can even hear the energy, right? So it's like, hear the energy change. Like, I really wonder what it's going to take to be able to have the means to take my family to Mongolia. Okay, so feel the energy of that. And then feel the energy of this. I can't afford it. And feel like for me, I feel the energy so deeply, like I can't afford it. Like this is like 1938 talking. (laughs) So most of you weren't even born in 1938. You know, your grandparents or your great, great grandparents were alive in 1938. And so they're programming your reality. They're actively programming your reality with the big fat lie called I can't afford it. And so I can feel people, they're like, ooh, but what, Jennifer? Show me how I can afford it. Well, the very first thing that you need to do is you need to stop saying the prayer or the lie called I can't afford it. You have to actively program yourself to stop saying that. Just stop it. You know, like even put a... um, a little hair tie or elastic around your wrist or around your finger. And every time you find yourself saying it or thinking it, then what I want you to do 
is snap that band. Like, stop it. Come present. Open up your heart. Even Maybe even put your hand on your heart. Open up your heart and ask yourself, I wonder, I wonder who I would have to talk to. I wonder what connections I already have. And then also the universe is programmed more about how we feel about a certain opportunity than what we even say. Like it's programmed how we feel first, then what we say, and then what we do. So, you know, for me, I know I'm going to Mongolia with my family. You know, it might be this year. It might be next year. It's going to be pretty quick because I keep talking about it and I keep feeling into it. And, you know, like if you sit and have like a real visceral experience where you can like smell what ponies smell like, because Mongolia, they don't have like these tall thoroughbred horses, they have ponies. So like if you fall off, I mean, if you land on a rock, it's no good. But if you fall off and you just like keep your body rolling. It's not a big deal. You're just like, whatever. I fell off a Mongolian pony, big deal. And, uh, you know, so like, what do ponies smell like? And then, you know, like, what do their manes feel like when you touch their manes? And, you know, what noises do they make? And so for you, like, whatever it is, like go into the 5D experience, you know, like, taste, sight, smell, feeling, and then also like the energy. What do they sound like? You know, what does the sound of little pony hooves galloping across the step sound like? You know, like maybe you can even find a video of what it sounds like when ponies gallop across the step. And then just program your experience with this visceral noise, visceral smell, visceral taste. Like what does Mongolian food taste like? They, it's curry in most cases. And, um, you know, so try to find Mongolian curry and like smell it. And, you know, like maybe you want to go to France. Maybe you want to go to like a winery or maybe you want to go to Bora Bora or Tahiti. Like what do they smell like? What do they sound like? What do they feel like? You know, and then just really bathe in that experience because that's how we program our reality. That's how we program our reality. And so I know that I've gone really quite fast in the first segment of this, but I want to just remind you that we do have choice of what is going on in our psychic Wi-Fi. I call like your upstairs in your brain, anything that's going on in there, 90, 95, maybe even 100% of the stuff that's going on in your brain right now isn't even yours. It's just superimposed on your consciousness from what we call this reality, you know? So most of us are picking up thoughts, feelings, emotions, stuff that people say, stuff that people aren't saying, and we're calling it ours. But it's not. It's not ours, you guys. It's just stuff we're picking up on the psychic Wi-Fi. So what if most, if not all, of the I can't afford it lie comes from other people thinking that? And so what if we're actively programming each other with this lie? Like, oh, I walked into a grocery store and I was in the organic section and I accidentally walked by an old lady who thought it was really, really expensive to buy the raspberries. And she said to herself in her head, I can't afford it. And so I heard that in my head as I can't afford it. And so I programmed myself by listening psychically to other people. So we're going to end up talking about that after the break, you guys. I am so glad that you decided to show up today. I'm so grateful. I know that there's tons of different things that you could be listening to, tons of different broadcasts and programs. 
And so I'm so excited that you decided to listen to this show today. Any feedback that you have, I would love to hear it. Even if it's something that you're like, I didn't get that. I didn't understand that. Please reach out to me. I always love to have a healthy debate on everything that I, everything I present is just my interesting point of view about everything. And so I would love to talk to you. I'd love to find out what your experience is. So after the break, I'm going to give you even more deep dive on I Can't Afford It and Other Big Fat Lies. My name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis, and you are listening to Big Fat Lies on Inspired Choices Network. See you after the break. Have you ever said to yourself, I knew I shouldn't do that? How did that feel? What did you make that mean about you? Business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis stands for you being deliciously ambitious, passionately productive, oh so profitable, and creating a life that is truly delightful in every area. Tune in to Big Fat Lies every Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain, 3 p.m. Central, and 4 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com to open your eyes to the big fat lies that are keeping business owners from being the bright shining beacons they came here to be. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Big Fat Lies with business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to Jennifer at jennifercramerlewis.com. Hey guys, welcome back. So before the break, we were talking about the energetics of money. And so if you're just joining us, today's show is called I Can't Afford That and Other Big Fat Lies. And so we're talking about like, how does money actually get into our worlds? Like what is the energetics of money? And so is it really, we just go out and, you know, somebody puts an ad in the paper and says, hey, I'm looking for this type of person. And so then you go for a job interview and you get hired and you do that kind of job and then finally you get paid. Is it like that or is it something completely different? Something completely different. (laughs) It's something completely different. And so when we think about what we can afford and, you know, the energetics of money, what happens is it becomes like an invisible doggy fence, you know, those things where it's just like, or, you know, we, we've all seen those like videos of somebody not realizing that the glass door is shut on the sliding glass door. And so they come flying like as though they're going to walk into the house and then they bang themselves really hard on the sliding glass door. Well, this is what I can't afford it actually does in your universe. You're like, okay, I want to go to Mongolia and I'm going to like smell the ponies and I'm going to ride the ponies and I'm going to like love on the ponies and, you know, really bond with my family and this amazing horseback adventure. We're going to laugh and we're going to play games and we're just going to have so much family bonding time without our devices. So. That's what I'm thinking is going to happen. And so if I allowed myself to buy the lie that I can't afford it, you know, I mean, this is a, a interesting luxury vacation. I mean, many people would spend $20,000 on a vacation to go to Paris, maybe, and stay, 
you know, at the Georges Sank and, you know, have wine and baguette and maybe, you know, go to Chanel and, you know, walk on the Champs Elysees. And I'm not saying that I wouldn't like to do that because I absolutely would love to do that. But for a family vacation, for me, the idea of getting to be at the birth, because my boys freaking love horses and they haven't really had a huge opportunity to be around them and to ride them all that much. And so it's a really great place for them to get to learn how to do that. And for me to share, you know, my childhood experience of growing up as an equestrian, um, I don't know, it's just so freaking cool. And so, you know, imagine me being all sort of jacked about this experience and then, you know, trying to walk someplace, you know, and not paying attention and then accidentally walking into the plate glass window called, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. And this is what happens every single day to people. It happens every single day to you. And so it's time for you to open your eyes to the places and spaces where you're ruled absolutely ruled by what you can afford and by what you can't afford. And so I remember ages ago, I studied uh, this, these consciousness techniques and um, the, the head of the company said, it's all just choice. And I remember thinking, well, that's all fine and dandy, dude. You have millionaire choices. And probably maybe you're just judging me that I have millionaire choices too. And so what happens is when you realize that choices are the sum total of the choices that we make every single day and the sum total of the, you know, the, um, the broadcasts that we allow to go on inside our mind you know, any negative self-talk, any places and spaces where we're limiting ourselves on what we can receive and be and have and choose, then it's just, it's like that invisible plate glass window that when you walk into it, you stub your toe, you like hurt your nose, you give yourself a conk on the forehead, you know, you probably put your back out, you know, or worse, like smash the whole freaking glass window. You know, there's so many places and spaces. And I'm a truth teller. You know, I want people to be aware of the truth. And that's what I incarnated with. That's one of my big, big things is to show people the truth. And the truth is every place where you quote unquote can't afford something is a place where you have an invisible plate glass window holding you in. You know, and maybe you've bashed up against it a bunch of different times and now you're like, well, fuck, I can't afford that. My whole reality is supporting my choice to not afford that. And then now this biatch is telling me that it's just choice. So go ahead and get pissed off. That's what I'm saying to you. Go ahead and get pissed right off. Now, if you're a regular listener, you know I love to um, ask you to go Google uh, Dr. David Hawkins, the Hawkins scale. And so if you look up the Hawkins scale, what you're going to find is anger and pissed off is a way higher frequency than hopeless or guilty or blame or shame or regret. And so people who are caught in the paradigm of I can't afford it are caught in those lower harmonics. And so when you do get pissed off, you're like, well, fuck, I'm going to have a fucking Mongolian vacation and nobody's getting in my way. Then what? And so it may be, you know, it may be that there's some stuff happening in your life and in your business that you feel like you need to get to the next level on. And so, you know, and I see this all the time, people don't usually hire me when they're like, wow, Jennifer, my business is going fantastic. And, 
I just wonder how fantastical it could get. So I was thinking about hiring you because you laugh all the time and you're so fun and funny and you have interesting, weird points of view about how people can change stuff. Oh, no. No, they just wait until it's a complete shit show. And that's fine. I actually like cleaning up a mess. It's one of my things that I get a jollies out of. I'm like, okay, let's just clean up this mess together. Let's just get this ship going in the direction of a business that's completely delightful, where, you know, all of the phasers are set to stun on your ideal client. They're just like, whoa, that's my favorite thing. So if you have waited to work with someone to help you with these thoughts that are like running through your head like a rampage um okay because here's the thing most of the time we don't even realize how often we tell ourselves we can't have something like how often like even if you decided to do an experiment wouldn't that be freaking fun to do an experiment where you just noticed you just noticed the frequencies that you allow to come through your body and you don't question them. You're just like, I'm feeling like shit. And you, so if you had a piece of paper, if you had a little notebook and every time you kind of felt like weird or angry or upset or vague doubt even, like even you're just like staring off into space, you know, and you really just noticed like how many times a day does that happen to you where you're disengaged and you're not actively making choices in your life? Like how many times a day does that actually happen to you? And I do notice that there is a correlation to how often people check out in their lives to how much money they have. Isn't that weird? So when nobody's piloting the bus, because you're like checked out, you're like, oh, scrolling on the TikTok, scrolling on the Instagram, totally checked out, totally vagued out, and no money coming in. So I do notice that there's a correlation, but I really want you to do your own research, do your own due diligence on this for yourself. And in most cases, you're going to find out that there's a lot of your life that you're checked out. And so in many cases, you can be checked out with your emotions. So you can be like pissed off at something unjust that's happening in your universe. Or you could be crying, really freaking sad about something unjust that's happening in your universe or all of the spectrum of emotion. You could even be like, like really, really excited about stuff that's happening in your universe, but they, it really doesn't have any effect on your life. You know, you could be excited about politics. You could be excited about something that's happening to somebody who doesn't even know what your name is. And, you know, this can be something that helps you to check out of your life. And do notice, I said, helps you check out of your life. And so another book that, um, that I love to recommend uh, is something called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And it's Dr. Joe Dispenza. And so, you know, looking at this habit of I can't afford it and where it comes from, most of the time, family dynamics has a huge play in your life. So as a female business owner, you may be like, wow, I did so well this year. And then the next year, you kind of like tail off or you know, something just doesn't work or something unhooks or you lose a big client or, you know, it's, it's very, very interesting what people's, you know, plate glass window is that they can't get through. And so if you grew up in a family where money was difficult, or if you grew up in a family where money was secret, then what can happen is you feel that, but you don't have the ability to articulate that you're not actively making choices you're kind of like checked out when it comes to money even even if you've been lucky even if you've been lucky so far you're like well wait a minute Jennifer I'm making over 250 I'd really like to approach 500 I'd like to have a company that has the ability to bring in a million or maybe you're at 500 and you want to get to 1.5 
We have to look at those places and spaces where you're checked out of your life and also the modes of you being checked out of your life. So interesting. So what are we going to talk about after the break? Well, what I'm going to talk about to you guys is the power of being freaking audaciously happy and how easy it is for money to come into your life when you are so freaking happy and you're doing the things that make you happy, whether you can afford them or not. And now I'm not going to recommend slapping shit that you can't afford on your credit card. I want you to have something completely different. So this is our cliffhanger. How can you have what makes you audaciously happy without it costing a mint? And so we're going to the break right now. My name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis. You are listening to Big Fat Lies on Inspired Choices Network. That was easy for me to say. See you after the break. Have you ever said to yourself, I knew I shouldn't do that? How did that feel? What did you make that mean about you? Business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis stands for you being deliciously ambitious, passionately productive, oh so profitable, and creating a life that is truly delightful in every area. Tune in to Big Fat Lies every Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain, 3 p.m. Central, and 4 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com to open your eyes to the big fat lies that are keeping business owners from being the bright shining beacons they came here to be. This is Big Fat Lies with business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to jennifer at jennifercramerlewis.com. Oh my goodness, I'm having so much fun with my show producer here. And she's like, cliffhanger. (laughs) So before the break, I gave you a little hint. I gave you a little hint. So if you're just joining us, if you're just joining us, we're talking about the places and spaces where the big fat lie of I can't afford it has really kept you hemmed in. And I have shared some real energetic masterpieces on how to be in harmony with money. And so some of the places and spaces where you can be in harmony with money is what is money going to do for you? Like, what do you really want to do with it? Because money is an inert substance until you program it with what you're going to do with it. And so in the first segment of the show, I gave you some hints about how to program money to show up because you're already showing the universe what you're going to do with it, how you're going to feel when it arrives. And so you're programming the money to come to the party called your life. And so, you know, some people are really able to just not do that. And it kind of shows up. But for me and for my clients, what I notice is the more they're in the visceral experience of what it is that the money will do and what they will do with the money and how they'll feel and, you know, just the actual 5D experience, then it just becomes easy. And so in the second segment of the show, I talked about the unconsciousness of money and how it's really difficult to have money if you keep checking out of your life. And so you may notice that, God, this whole universe is programmed right now to have us check out. You know, it's just, it's unreal. You know, we're being entertained, but we're also checking out of our lives for long periods of time you know, like 90 minutes scrolling TikTok, looking at dance videos and, you know, hair styling tutorials. I mean, it's fun. And, you know, is that adding to your financial flows? Is that adding to your level of mastery in your life? Are you actively making the choices that you need to be making for your life to be able to have what 
truly brings you joy. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Well, it may just be me, so you can challenge me on this. But my incarnation cross is called the vessel of love. And so my what I incarnated in and to do is to help people love their experience in their life. You know, like it's like we all get these missions and mine is a really freaking juicy mission. It's about helping people love their experience in their life and to really enjoy having a body, having all of the sensual experience of having a body, you know, like juicy food and, you know, like riding ponies across the step or, you know, drinking beautiful wine or like making love to my husband, like just like all of the experiences that you can have with your body. You know, because there's a ton of different ways of being a being without a body. And um, I might do actually a radio show on that too, what it feels like to be a being without a body. If you're curious, you can ask me to do that and ask me how I talk to dead people and all of those groovy things. So if that sounds like something that would be neat for you, then you can hit me up for that and say, yes, Jennifer, please tell me how dead men do talk. <laughs> All right, so I left you with a cliffhanger before the break. I said that the true way for you to be able to be sure that money will come to your party, that it will be in your life, is through joy. Joy. And so I don't know, like, if you aren't, then I want to turn your eyes to the places and spaces. Go in again have a look at Dr. David Hawkins' scale. So Google that or whatever web browser you love, Dr. David Hawkins' Hawkins scale, and you're going to find out that joy and that ecstasy and that love are really freaking high frequency. And as the frequency gets higher, then the energetics become less dense. It's like, you know, if you're in blame, shame, regret, guilt, like way down there, then it becomes super difficult for you to navigate your life. You're like, well, fuck, I can't even make a choice to get me out of this. Well, here's the thing. If you can jump up into the higher harmonics of joy and love and ecstasy, then that's what changes things. And it has to be a radical freaking choice a radical freaking choice, you guys. So what I love, and it's so funny, my coach friends are like, oh God, Jennifer, you and your magic lists. And, but I love asking my clients to make lists. And so it's so interesting. I have a, a teenage boy and, you know, as teenage boys do, uh, I ended up giving him this homework yesterday uh, to make a list of 25 things that bring him true joy and happiness. And this is what I'm going to recommend to you. I want you to have a list of 100 things that bring you true joy and happiness. And I want you to put the list where you brush your teeth. And, you know, like maybe even just have a pen sitting on the countertop. And if something comes into your mind while you're brushing your teeth, you're like, oh, yes, riding ponies is like so happy and you know like having a really great meal is so happy and like laughing until you snort makes me so happy and you know having clothes that make me feel beautiful make me feel so happy or like whatever it is it doesn't matter this is your personalized list and so you know nobody gets to judge you on this list so if other people live in your household you have my permission to tell them to just go F off. This is my list. Make your own damn list and then put a blank piece of paper beside your list. <laughs> but here's the thing. The more switched on we are and the more we identify what it is that makes us happy. And then we start to make these micro choices that they that add up to the macro choice 
called, if it doesn't make me happy, if it doesn't bring me to joy, I'm not going to freaking choose it. And so that's an audacious choice. I have been working with this energetics a long time. And so what's a micro choice that you can make right now? Like a real micro choice that you can make right now is to kick out the thoughts that make you feel unhappy. And so these thoughts might be like, I can't afford it. (laughs) Or uh, I'll never have that. Or nobody's ever going to help me do that. Or I don't know how to do that. Or I'll never figure that out. Or I'll never have the things that I want to have. You know, like whatever these sort of depressing, horrible thoughts are inside your head about what your capacities are to be and do and have, what it is you came here to be and do and have. Like, let's start to kick those out. And so what I did recommend earlier was when you had those thoughts, I want you to question where do they come from? Who do they belong to? Like, where do these thoughts even come from? Are they mine? Like, are they? Because I I would hazard a guess that most of it is just laying over your consciousness as like a, a holding pattern, as an addictive pattern. And so what we learn from uh, the book called Breaking the Habit of Being You is that your energetic set point of your family of origin becomes your energetic set point that you have to really fucking fight your way out of. And so if they were lovely people, if they were gorgeous people, then bless you. Get yourself out there and spread that wealth of growing up in a just a gorgeous family of origin. Like, I really hope you're doing like mission work or coaching or psychology or you know you're working with college teams or you know you're going out and like spreading that love everywhere if your family of origin was like just really lovely people and you don't have a whole lot of hang-ups and so if you didn't grow up in a family of origin where you know people told you how wonderful you were and you know, really helped you shake off a bad habit or shake off a bad thought pattern and, you know, just loved it out of you, then what happens is your set point uh, can be anxiety. Your set point can be anger. Your set point can even be like despair or hopelessness. And so in this lifetime, this is something that you're going to come up against, you know, just like you probably even know right now listening to me like if i say truth what is the the set point that you're coming up against constantly what is it like if you could name it what's a word that you associate with it and just know that for yourself you know because even listening to this program more than once, your consciousness is going to go up, guys. You're going to be like, wow, I now have a question to ask. I now have a process to run. I know that joy will always bring me money. And so what I promised before the previous break is that, you know, it doesn't cost a lot of money to be happy. It doesn't cost a lot of money to have these opportunities come available to you. Like, have you ever noticed that people who are really like, um, they really are having good luck in their lives? Well, there's something called the science of luck. There's something called the science of luck. And the science of luck is to do what makes you happy. And if it doesn't make you happy, don't freaking do it. You can even ask yourself, is this a loving choice for me? Is this a happy choice for me? Is this a delightful choice for me? Does this add to me going to Mongolia? Or does this distract? Oh, does this distract me from going to Mongolia? Or detract or um, diffuse my possibilities? 
so. I would write down those questions if I were you. So we are heading into another break. And after we get back from the break, I'm going to talk about all the places and spaces where you're not nourishing your future possibilities. You are stuck in the holding pattern of I can't afford it. And I have an invitation for you to get the hell out of that. You don't need to choose that anymore. It's not good for you. And really, you cannot afford the luxury of having all of those negative thoughts in your head. You just can't. You can't. So see you after the break. You have been listening to Big Fat Lies. My name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis, and we are an Inspired Choices Network. Have you ever said to yourself, I knew I shouldn't do that? How did that feel? What did you make that mean about you? Business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis stands for you being deliciously ambitious, passionately productive, oh so profitable, and creating a life that is truly delightful in every area. Tune in to Big Fat Lies every Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain, 3 p.m. Central, and 4 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com to open your eyes to the big fat lies that are keeping business owners from being the bright shining beacons they came here to be. This is Big Fat Lies with business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to jennifer at jenniferkramerlewis.com. Hey, beautiful people. We are back. Can you believe it? This show is going so quickly and I am having so much fun facilitating you on the big fat lie called I can't afford it. (laughs) So at the beginning of the show, I was giving you some information about how the universe is programmed first with what we feel, then with what we say, and then what we do. So first we feel. And so if you can get into that 5D experience of what it is that you would do with the money, then what happens is it becomes a super highway that allows money to come to you. Have you ever noticed that you have to decide what you're going to do with the money and you have to like be super jacked about it and then all of a sudden money shows up. And I'll tell you over and over and over again with my clients, The first thing that I hear is, oh, I really want to work with you, but I don't know how I can afford it. Well, guess what? You have to make the choice to get the correct support. And then what can happen is the money just shows up anyways, over and over. My clients are like, oh yeah, I got the money. And I'm like, of course you did, because you already decided that this was going to be joyful for you to have the support. And so the next thing that we talked about was the frequency of anger, blame, shame, regret, guilt, and where you can be stuck in sort of like a place where you keep banging your face against against a plate glass window. You're like, oh, I can't get out of it. So I recommended that you look at something called the Hawkins scale and really just notice that anger actually even has a higher frequency than blame, shame, regret, and guilt. So if you have a little steam in your genes right now and you're ready to make some huge changes, then that's the energy that you will be able to use to get into those changes. And so the next thing that I wanted you guys to have a look at is the places and spaces where you are actively checked out of your life and also the modes of checkout. Like, are you scrolling on your phone? Are you getting overly excited about stuff that you can't change? Are you getting into arguments? Are you getting into drama and trauma instead of actually focusing on what it is that you would like to be and do and have and choose? And then asking questions about that. And then the next thing that I shared with you was that joy is the one of the highest frequencies. Joy. It's actually even higher than love. Joy. And so you can write a list. This is what I recommended you do. Write a list of a hundred things that bring you pure joy. 
Like you're like, oh my God, there is nothing better than the smell of pony breath. Because <laughs> honestly, there is really nothing better than the smell of pony breath. So the visceral experience of joy. And so money would love to come into your life, but you have to make these choices to be completely tuned in, to be completely turned on to joy. And then you have to be kind of a dick about it. You have to be like, okay, that's not a joyful choice for me. I'm not going to freaking choose it. And so, and you have to be audacious about it. You have to be like, you know what, Bob? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and stick to it. Don't let people bulldoze you. I say this over and over. You can always spot a bulldozer coming. They're moving that slow. So when somebody tries to bulldoze you on your no, you already saw them coming. You were just pretending they weren't coming or you were checked out of your life. So don't let anybody bulldoze you on your no. And so my invitation for you as we head away is all of the choices that you're making in your life right now, you don't have to make them alone. You don't have to make them alone. And it's funny, another coach brought this to my attention. We have had coaches our entire lives. You know, we've had our grandparents and our parents. We've had our soccer coach and our swim coach and our ballet coach and our, you know, whatever coaches. You know, to get better in your life, to do better, you have to know better. And if you don't actually know what the big fat lies are that you're buying into, then how can you take really good care of yourself? You know, how can it be not you abdicating out of your life and saying, oh, well, my life is just shitty. You know, I don't know how to make good choices. Well, here's the thing. You need to have somebody model good choices for you and to hold you accountable to the good choices that you're making for yourself. We don't go get ahead until we know better. And so before the break, I, I just really want to, before the end of the show, I just really want to open your eyes to the places and spaces where you're not nurturing yourself, where you're allowing that swirling toilet bowl of thoughts of, you know, how you haven't succeeded or all of the mistakes that you've made are just like swirling around in your energetic field and making you feel like complete shit. And so you don't have to stay stuck there, guys. You don't have to. And so if you are a female business owner and this stuckness, if this lack of receiving of joy is stopping you, you need to have some new habits. And the best way to make sure new habits stick is to work with somebody who is a professional uh, at business, if you're a business owner, and also at working with the energetics of money and the energetics of body and the energetics of joy and marrying them, like marrying all of those energies so that you're fully supported in your life and in your business. And that's my complete joy. I freaking love that every day, all day. So we are almost closing out the hour. You've been listening to Big Fat Lies. And next week's Big Fat Lie is called, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm so excited about this Big Fat Lie called, I'm not happy. So you see all of these like, I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be happy. And I have a really going to have a great show next week. I'm super excited to facilitate the science of happiness and also all of the places and spaces that you are negating happiness by even saying that out loud. I'm not happy. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm going to be taking you guys to church on all of the places and spaces where you are not happy. But it's going to be fun and you're going to enjoy it. So I am going to see you at one o'clock Pacific, four o'clock Eastern Standard Time. That becomes, I think, nine o'clock at night in London, England. And first thing in the morning in Australia, 
You have been listening to The Big Fat Lies Show. My name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis, and I'm so glad that you are listening today on Inspired Choices Network. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Thank you for listening to Big Fat Lies with business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. Join us next week at 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain, 3 p.m. Central, and 4 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until next week, Jennifer invites you to laugh at limitation and live life delightfully by opening your eyes to the big fat lies.